Let's add a custom advanced item to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Alright, we found some back in the other ones more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom advanced item to Minecraft. Now, what I refer to as an advanced item is simply an item that has its own custom class because if we look into the mod items class that we've created over here before we have the pink garnet and the raw pink garnet and both of them simply create new items so they don't have any special functionality added to them but now we're going to create a custom item class so for this in the item package i'm going to create a new package called custom that is just for my own sort of personal organization i like to put my custom item classes in this custom package and then inside of there i'm going to create the chisel item in this case but of course we have to write this correctly chisel item there we go and usually the convention is to well name the item in the beginning and then add the item as a suffix over here so that you understand that okay this is going to be an item class and this will extend the class item over here from net minecraft item simply hit tab to auto completed we can then hover over this create constructor matching super and in theory now our custom item class is done but of course there's no functionality added to it just yet so of course we wanted to add some stuff the first thing you can do is you can start typing in overwrite and you'll be able to see that there are plenty of methods that you can in theory overwrite over here to basically see oh there's quite a few things that we can add and most of these methods if you overwrite them they're going to add some functionality or they get called when certain things happen right so in the event for example of the post hit over here that would happen if you hit some like if you hit an entity with this particular item in hand right on clicked on stack click there's a couple of things here that could be overwritten what i highly recommend you also do is you click on the item over here and you press Control h this will bring up the class hierarchy on the right and you can actually even expand this and you'll be able to see every single vanilla item that exists and yes in theory how does bone meal work double click on it or the comp compass i mean it doesn't matter let's look at the compass then well compass item there it is right so there we have it there is the compass and that is how the compass works if you want if you want another one once again click on this Control h and we can for example take a look at the minecart item or the range weapon item or maybe we want to look at the the egg item or the brush or whatever you want you can basically take a look at it highly recommended this is one of the best resources that you have available now in our case with the chisel what i want to be able to do is i want to right click certain blocks and they then turn into other blocks that is going to use the use on block method as you can see this one right here i'm going to select this press tab to auto complete it and it will automatically add this method to this particular class in here well we want to get a few things because we have this item usage context which will actually allow us to get a plenty of things like the block state that was clicked the position that was clicked the player that clicked that particular position and a couple of more things the first thing we want though is the world over here from net minecraft level world that is exactly right and that one is going to be the world equal to the context dot get world absolutely so basically because we're going to have to check a couple of things for the world in just a second then we also want the block, right? So this is from net Minecraft block over here. This was the clicked block, right? Because we actually need to get this via getting the world dot get block state and then actually getting the position that was clicked. So we want to say context dot get block pause and then getting the block from that. So get block right here. There you go. Now all of the code is also available down below. And then let's see. Then the question is, well, now we have the clicked block, right? We know which block was clicked and we somehow need to say, okay, is this block one of the blocks that we want to change? And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to do this with a map. So we're going to add a public static final map over here from block to block in this case. I think that that makes the most sense. And this is going to be the chisel underscore map. This is going to be equal to map.of. And then let's see what we can add over here. We're going to add blocks.stone. So we want to be able to turn stone into blocks.stone stone underscore bricks i think that makes a lot of sense then let's also add blocks dot let's say end underscore stone and that one can be turned into of course end stone bricks all right any anything else how about we also change up the blocks dot i don't even know i mean it doesn't matter one i mean it doesn't matter we can do whatever the frick we want in theory so let's get 
a log over here, right? An oak log. Why the frig not? And then we actually are going to change that to mod blocks dot pink garnet block because why the frick not and then at the end over here just to basically show you that you can go absolutely crazy how about we train change a diamond block no how about we change a gold block and that one is going to change into blocks dot and then is this going to be a netherite block there you go so those are going to be the different ones that we can basically change right so it always goes from this block to this block that should make a lot of sense in this case and then the question is well how do we know that the clicked block is actually part of this map well it's very simple the first blocks over here because they always have to appear in pairs for a map are th those are the keys for this specific map therefore we can say if chisel map dot contains key passing in the clicked block over here, then we know, okay, we have just clicked a block that we actually want to transform. We then have to check whether or not the world is client or server side. So we want to say if world dot is client, and then this is extremely important. We have to negate this with the exclamation mark right here, because inside of this if statement, we want to be on the server and not on the client. And obviously, the isClient method is going to return a true when we're on the client. Therefore, we have to negate it. So then we are on the server, right? So this means, are we on the server? Yes. Now, inside of this if statement, we are on the server. Why do we need to be on the server? Why, why is there even such a thing? Client, server, what is this craziness? Well, when you're connecting to a Minecraft server, right, obviously, you can't do anything you want, right? If you were to be able to, let's say, for example, say uh, world.setBlockState, right? and literally just change the block in a position, you could literally just make, you know, diamonds appear, cheat everything, and that would be a little bit, you know, opposed to the game, right? Therefore, this can only happen on the server, so world.setBlockState at that particular position, so contact.getBlockPause, and then we say chiselMap.get, passing in the clicked block, and then getting the default state for whatever the, well, created block is. This is going to change the block at that particular position. We then also want to damage the chisel in the side of our hand. That's going to look a little bit crazy, but don't worry. We're basically going to get the stack. This is going to be the item inside of our hand. We then will damage it by the amount of one. We'll say then then say we'll then say world dot cast, and we're going to cast this into a server world. We know that this is going to work because we're on the server in this if statement. So that's why this is okay. We then will say context.getPlayer. We will cast this player into the server player entity. We also know that this works because we are on the server right here. And once again, the code is available down below. We will then meet, need to make a consumer of an item. This is going to do context.getPlayer.sendEquipment stat broken status or send equipment break status, passing in the item consumer and then the equipment slot of the main hand. This is basically how we can damage this particular item and that way it is going to be damaged and then lastly i also want to play a sound so we're going to say world.play sound passing in a null over here then getting the context.get block post this is going to be the position the sound is played sound events dot and i want to use the block grindstone use and then the last one is going to be the sound category of blocks and that way we basically have this particular method done. The last thing we want to do is in the return here, we want to return an action result of success, of success, there you go. And the reason why we want to do this is so that we get a right clicking, hey, this was successful. And also we get an animation associated with that right click. Hopefully the logic here makes sense. This really is not too complicated in and of itself as the, well, as a code as code goes, basically, right, this is really not that complicated. If at any point you're like, I don't understand the code over here, that might be an indication that some more Java knowledge might be needed. Basically, as an appeal over here, you can think about it, uh, that that might be quite a good idea. But whatever the case may be, if you understand this, if you sort of like, okay, I sort of follow the logic over here, we now have the chisel item and we can now register it via the mod items class. So simply, we're going to make a public static final item. And this is going to be the chisel equal to the register item method. We're going to name this chisel. And then here, extremely important, we want to make a new chisel item, right? We want to create a new instance of our custom item with new item settings, item.settings. And here, we also want to add a max damage over here, let's say 32, and then end it with a semicolon. Now, why is this the case? And how can you basically double check? 
Well, if you go into your chisel item class or your custom item class and the constructor is not yellow, right, then you know this is not used anywhere. Therefore, we're not actually creating the correct class. So this is very important that we do this and then we're basically good to go. Let's add it to the creative mode tab or, or the item group, whatever you want to call it, mod items chisel over here. And then, of course, we need to go through all of the rest of the assets. But the translation should be very, I mean, at this point, right, that it should be fairly self-explanatory when it comes to the translation. Then we get to the item model JSON file, a similar thing. We simply copy over one of the already existing item model JSON files and simply change the texture that it points to. And then in this case, I also have the texture available. That is, of course, also available for download down below as well. So there we go. That's going to be the chisel PNG. And with that, we have added the chisel right here. And of course, if you ever want to change anything, well, that is simply in the map right here, right? You literally just add a new pairing. And with that pairing, you can then basically change the first one, right? The key to the value. That's as easy as this. And that is actually everything we need to do for this particular item over here, this particular advanced item. So let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, finally, we're back in Minecraft. And you can see the chisel has been successfully added. And if I right click, there we freaking go. It turns it into a different block and you can see that works, except it doesn't work for the diamond one. What did I choose? Oh, I chose the gold block. That's why. Well, that is, of course, correct then. Then let's do the gold block. This was, of course, completely planned over here, right? I wanted to show you that that doesn't work. And then here, bam, it works. And by the way, it also works regardless of, let's say, you know, if a log is sideways, up or down, left or right, it doesn't matter. You can turn them into the other block and there we freaking go. That is really cool, and I actually think that this is a really freaking cool example of a custom item added to Minecraft. When it comes to advanced items, of course, most of this stuff is basic Java knowledge because, well, you have to sort of know, okay, I want to do X, Y, Z, and then you have to, you have to basically translate it into some sort of code and then, well, basically make sure that that works. So this is just an example over here, but I think that is a pretty cool example, and hopefully that's going to be useful to you going forward. But well, that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about advanced blocks as well. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.